I remodeled my kitchen using spray paint, elbow grease, fabric, and pennies. Stick around and see how I did it. This project all started with this under sink cabinet. These are old Ikea cabinets and these hinges were broken and the door was hanging off on one side for many months. And I started thinking about putting up a curtain. So here's pretty much the before. You can see the kitchen was mostly white with turquoise and here you can see after I've hung up the curtain. Now we start with the penny counter, which is something that I've always wanted to do. And it was not nearly as hard as I thought it would be. As is so often the case, the job just continued to expand and here I am taking off the hardware and getting these drawers ready to be sanded and painted. And I was so happy with how custom uh, these doors and drawers and cabinet doors turned out using this ink blue paint from Rust-Oleum. Here is before I had finished the stove and I was like, wow, that looks so custom. I should probably do the whole kitchen this way. So eventually I did. <laughs> and it was all overdue to be decluttered and reorganized anyway. Okay, these cabinets are remaining to take down. Where'd my drill go? Oh, here we go. So let's see if we can get these guys down. You can see the bottom of this. All this needs to be sanded on the bottom. But other than that, it's very nice and strong and solid. Still 
Here you can see that I took down the pot hanger over the stove, which people for many years have said I should do. And yeah, it looks great. is complete and it's actually been quite a bit of time but I'm super happy with the result it turns out yes you can paint IKEA cabinets and I did and that ended up looking really custom but it all started with that curtain that was replacing some broken cabinets then I went into this custom built-in and I created a penny countertop which is something I've always wanted to do and uh, painted the trim and hung the pans up here and consolidated here where there used to be a rack over the stove, which years ago when I first did Pomeroy Method, people commented saying that they didn't like the pans over the stove. Well, now those are gone and just one side has pans. I, once again, I painted these Ikea cabinets and they just look so custom. Um, and these are just these cheap Ikea cabinets. They have now lasted 20 plus years. Now you can really see the uh, vent. Um, I've painted this in the past, but it was overdue to be cleaned and painted. And the ceiling was overdue to be mopped. So I basically mopped the ceiling. Um, let's look at it from this side. And you know, while I was doing this, I started to have sort of feelings of inadequacy. And I was like, is it too crazy and bright? So I just added the green. I actually really like the green as a little touch. And when I was researching historic ways that these kitchens were painted, uh, green and robin's egg blue were a very common color. Now this very dark midnight blue um, that I have painted this cabinet, that is a very trendy color right now. I've noticed a lot of houses painted this color, a lot of kitchens painted this midnight blue or ink blue, but um, it goes really well with the copper of the pennies. Now these pennies are not finished in any way. I haven't put uh, polyurethane over them or anything, but I still think they look really nice. And one thing that I did years ago was that I took the cabinet doors off of these, this built-in um, and I installed those basic um, shelves because the cabinet doors were very uninspired and I wanted to expose that paneling, that original paneling. And the same thing here, the drawers were original, but then there were cabinet doors down here and I wanted to, again, expose the, the paneling. And uh, how can I forget <laughs> the floor? Um, Painting the grout lines really, um, really did a good job. Who knows how long it's going to last, but it's already lasted eh, a week or so. And people are being a little bit more careful right now, so that's nice. And then of course I reorganized um, these cabinets. They were overdue to be reorganized. I also covered these, um, I recovered these little uh, can shelves with um, copper colored contact paper. So yes, spray paint for the cabinets. There's my microwave, which you can see my video. I repaired that microwave. Uh, it's a Frankenstein of two identical microwaves that I found on the street. And um, it turned out I needed to replace the magnetron from one of them, put it in the other one, boom, it worked. Um, and, uh, really pretty. Um, like I said, it's, it's my style. There are moments when I think it looks, um, it looks like a genius decorated this and then there's times when I think it looks like a crazy person did it. But decorate your kitchen your own way. Be yourself. And it turns out you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars 
Um, you just need some elbow grease and new ways of thinking and you can make everything last much, much longer or indeed, possibly, forever. That's kind of my motto. Make your car last forever. Make your kitchen last forever. Make your Ikea cabinets last forever. <laughs> Obviously, you can see I tried to incorporate this blue. I also painted the chair with that blue as well. So let me know what you think. Like I said, it's definitely my personality. Oh, and, and this was the original, well, this um, color of aqua or turquoise blue, that was the color that I painted it about 20 years ago. And I didn't want to change that. I was thinking of like a jade green was kind of more in fashion right now, but I didn't want to change that because it was going to be too much work. But honestly, I could have, given the amount of painting that I ended up doing. Um, patched the wall. Um, it has always bothered me that the trim here, which is hidden by a pan right now, but it doesn't align anymore because probably the house has shifted over the years. So I had the idea of just painting it the same color. And I actually think that works out kind of nicely. So there you have it. I also have to point out another thing about this uh, midnight blue color, which is that it hides the sins of the walls so effectively. And I never would have thought dark colors were that good in a kitchen, but like I said, if you have a hundred year old house and a lot of broken things in it, <laughs> like that outlet right there is, is pretty broken, but I've painted over it, you can't see it. <laughs> Uh, if I had small children, I would probably make sure that that was better protected. But anyway, the dark color makes a huge difference. And then it's just sort of like, uh, I don't know if I said in another video, but this piece of cloth, I found it on the street, a bolt of cloth, so that I hung up the, the um, curtain there. And uh, another point, I could go further and I, I will actually probably uh, extend this um, green and dark blue to the right of the door. Um, but I just wanted to get this done because I've, it's been weeks and weeks and it's time for me to move on in my life. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and actually I still have the cabinet doors, so I could go ahead and paint them ink blue as well. And, you know, I may eventually do that. The problem I was having was that the hinges are broken on one side and we lived with that for months. So that was the, ins that was the beginning of this whole journey was the fact that my doors were broken. Nobody was going to fix them. And then I saw something on Apartment Therapy about the old style curtain under a sink was back in style. Not that I care whether it was back in style or not, but I was like, oh, a curtain, how obvious. And so uh, that was the, the beginning of this whole thing. And then, you know, the pennies was another example of like, for years I've wanted to cover this. I've tried to scrape the paint off of it. It's always an eyesore. For a long time, I thought I would restore the wood here, but I could never make it look right. And then I was like, why not do pennies? And it's not that hard to bend the pennies to with pliers to make the corner pieces. That's what I did there. Again, the, the sins of this cabinet are really well hidden with the dark paint. The light paint, you can really see it. And then these are once again, just basic Ikea. That's Ikea hardware for the, uh, for the knob poles. But once again, um, they just stand out so much better against the dark background. And this molding that's underneath the sink, if, if I were to pull it out, um, you would see it is laughably lightweight. It is basically a piece of particle board wrapped in a piece of contact paper. That's what Ikea sells you. And then it has a little plastic clip on the back that clips onto these dinky plastic feet. Well, you know, you have to realize if you take care of it, this will last. It will last a long time. It will last decades. But anyway, that thing was used to drive me crazy. It was so ugly when it was white. Well, when I painted it midnight blue with the spray paint, boom, now it looks custom. Just examples of how serendipity really helped. Oh, and one last point. Um, I think it's funny how trends come and go because when we put in this, these cabinets, this butcher block top and everything from Ikea, we did that, like I said, 20 years ago. And then butcher block kind of went out of style, although I think it's one of those things that doesn't really ever go out of style. But right now, I'm seeing tons of butcher block everywhere. And one thing I think is really nice about butcher block is it's a renewable you know, resource. It's not like scraping granite or marble off the side of a 
mountain or out of a quarry. So I think it's a, a slightly um, more renewable resource. And I also want to say something about my stove. This uh, 1950s or 1940s stove, I can't remember. I, at one point a couple years ago, I paid a guy $500 to regulate some stuff on it. It, 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 it made some improvements, but not a huge amount. Here's the thing, a natural gas stove. These are going to eventually become illegal in California. Um, and I've been looking at induction stoves and there are some incredible looking induction stoves um, by, for example, a company called Big Chill. They make this beautiful induction stove, like $6,000. It's insane, right? Um, here's the thing. You know, first of all, they seem to be lacking some basic features. Like if you're gonna pay for an induction stove, it should probably have a timer on it and stuff like that. Well, this stove doesn't have that. And second of all, when I read the reviews, it sounds like these are stoves that are prone to break. So you're gonna spend thousands of dollars for these appliances that are gonna break. One thing I love about old appliances, this is one of the things I believe in, old appliances don't break. This refrigerator we bought it used, I don't know if it's from the 90s, keeps trucking. I know how much electricity it uses. It, it's it's very uh, efficient. This is a Bosch Silence Plus dishwasher. This has been excellent. This is one that I kind of researched and it, it does great. So what I am gonna probably do is get an induction cooktop, uh, maybe a single burner, because I researched the double burners and it sounds like they aren't that great either. They tend to, to break even though they look kind of cool. So I'm gonna get a single burner, we'll start with that and you know, go from there. I thought to myself, you know, you could even build yourself uh, an induction cooktop, basically. You know, make a cooktop, get a separate oven. So anyway, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, when the induction stoves are really in good quality and they're not breaking all the time. And when the government says you can't have natural gas anymore, Look at my kitchen. Guys, look at what my mom did. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Look, we used to live in a crummy household. We were broke. <laughs> and a little bit of... <laughs> now we got a brand new kitchen, guys. Subscribe. <laughs> Thank you.